Hello guys and girls, welcome to another repair video. So in this video today we're going to be working on an Xbox One X which has been sent in for repair and the customer has severely damaged the HDMI port on this one. If you watched my last video which is going out today then I gave a sneak preview of this one and what's wrong with it. So basically the HDMI port has been completely smashed and by the look of the port it looks burnt which is a bit of a concern because it may need a retimer chip also um, so I've quoted the customer for the HDMI port um, so if you can see inside there it looks pretty bad uh, I've quoted the customer for the HDMI port and then when I've got the console mailed in I took a quick look and determined that it might need a retimer chip also so I've advised the customer of that and obviously if it does then I'll stop the video I'll get her approval to actually change the retimer chip and obviously give her a quote on that also obviously I'm not going to charge her as much um, to do the two jobs so usually I'll charge 40 British pounds to do the HDMI port uh, which is around about the going rate um, I don't think it's too expensive uh, especially on an Xbox One X so usually I'll charge £40 for that and I'll charge £50 for the retimer chip and the reason for that is because the retimer chips are a bit more expensive uh, there's around about 8 or £10 difference in the price so labour is roughly around about £30 to £35 for this job um, but if it needs both then most of the labour will have been done because the board will already be out of the console um, and it'll just be reassembled the same so I'll probably charge a um, around about £10 labour to do the extra little bit of work because it only takes around about 10 minutes so uh, and then obviously the cost of the part as well uh, so yeah like I say this console is probably going to need a retimer chip we can't test it until we actually get a port in uh, or installed rather so unfortunately we're going to have to do the port and then see where we stand uh, but obviously if it needs it then we do have some in stock and we can get that done today for the customer so as you can see I haven't looked at this console yet um, I'm not going to attempt to power this on um, because there's damage to the port uh, and I don't want to cause any unnecessary damage so you can see the warranty sticker is still on there we're going to remove that now and then we're going to delve straight in disassemble this console and we're going to get it um, we're going to get the board out and do the the work that we've been tasked to do so let's pop this warranty sticker off this one's going to be, be a little bit tougher yep there we go so there's the warranty sticker that will go to my collection um, I've only, I, I don't really collect them, I just never move the things. Alright, so we've got two screws to remove using the TR9 screwdriver, which is the signature screw for Microsoft consoles, uh, or the Xbox series anyway, the Xbox One series anyway. I'm not sure about the 360, I've never actually opened a 360. Uh, I mean, I've took, sorry, yes I have, I've taken it apart to clean, um, I've never took the board out of one. I've never had one in for repair, so never needed to. Um, but uh, I know the TR9 screwdriver bit is signature to the Xbox One at least. Uh, and also the PS4 as well. The PS4 uses the exact same screw. Um, PS4 Slim and Pro have got some smaller um, Phillips screws as well. But um, the main one is the TR9. Okay, so those are off. And we're going to go ahead and remove the top chassis. Or the top case rather, the top plastics. So we're just going to slide that and pop that out of the way. Good. Let's pop that down there. Keep it nice and safe. And then we're going to just go ahead, remove all these screws. I'll skip through this. Um, there's plenty of videos online. But we're going to remove all the screws and get this open.
Good. Heat ink and sorry, not the heat ink. The board should come out now. Uh, and yeah, it is extremely dusty, but that is not a problem. Right. Okay. So if you watched my first Xbox One S repair video then you will be aware of how much I need to be careful oh does this got I think this has got some liquid damage so there's something I don't know if it's some sort of printing issue at the factory but that looks a little bit like corrosion to me um, I'll get back on track in a second eh, it could be conformal coating that's just the ground plane where I'm scratching away there, so it's not a problem. Um, it's not going to damage anything. Uh, never mind, we're not going to worry about that. It's, uh, it's not an issue for now. Obviously, we can't test this console until this port's been changed. But, um, yeah, it's just one of the things. Right, yeah, so if you watched my previous video um, about the bracket, the heatsink bracket, you'll know that I almost, almost bricked a device the other day, one of my own consoles. So I'm going to be very, very careful while I'm removing this bracket. And I'm going to use my finger because if I stab anything, it's going to be my finger. So this is a nice straightforward job. Um, HDMI ports are not too much trouble usually. I've had a few that I've come across and they've had um, severely ripped pads and I've ripped pads myself as well in the past um, oh, ooh, something there I don't know, is it? oh it's never mind it's the uh, it's a heat transfer pad on the bottom I keep forgetting the Xbox one X has got that uh, yeah I've ripped a few pads myself in the past I had one where I was working in the shop and I uh, I was doing a HDMI port on a PS4, and my boss shouted me, startled me. I spun round like that, um, and as I spun round, because I was holding the board, whoops. Um, so, so I was I was under the microscope, and I was holding I was holding the uh, holding the port with a pair of tweezers. Um, so it was like on a kind of uh, kind of this angle. And I was holding the port like this, um, using the heat, just gently lifting. Uh, my boss shouted me, I spun round and went like that, and it ripped every single trace off the board, and I had to replace the entire console. Uh, I've actually got the board here. So here is the PS4 board that I damaged of a customer's and I had to replace. Um, I ended up having to give him my own console. So if you take a look there at the HDMI port, you'll see all of those traces, bar three, four, are missing. It ripped every single one of them out of the board. 15 traces. There was no way I was repairing that. It was easier and worked out cheaper because, like I said, time is money. And it worked out cheaper to replace the board because... I replaced the board, uh, it was a brand new console so the, the customer didn't have any data on it anyway but uh, it was a brand new board um, so I just replaced that board for him and uh, yeah, uh, that saved me about three hours of work I would say um, hmm. I'm not sure if that's normal Oh yeah, it's fine. I was looking at a missing leg and it looked like the, the leg was snapped, but it's not on this little thing here. I don't know what it's called. Transistor or something? I don't know. Uh, all right, let's just get to work. Let's um, let's bring you over to the blue mat. So the port that we're going to be changing is, of course, this one here. So as you can see, it's a bit of a mess. Um, I don't see any signs of damage to the retimer IC. So the retimer IC is 
just here on the Xbox One X and I d I'm trying to get you in close there but I don't see any damage to that area I'm gonna give it a bit of inspection under the scope but it looks okay it doesn't look burnt or anything so we'll see what happens with that hopefully we don't have to change it uh, because I don't I've, it, it's extra money for me but I don't want to charge the customer anything that doesn't need charging I don't want them to pay more than they should um, whether it's extra money or not it's just one of them things I'd rather I'd rather keep the customer as happy as possible by doing it as cheap as possible and my prices are really cheap anyway um, but uh, yeah it's just one of them things I just I'd much rather just keep it at the price that he's already paid I mean the job's already paid for so I would have to invoice for an extra job <coughs> and I've been waiting for the I've been waiting for the replacement ports for a while because I thought I had some and I didn't. Okay, so over on the blue mat, what we're going to do first is we're going to use the heat gun and we're going to do this. We're going to remove this port upside down. So basically, what we're going to do is we're gonna just going to pop the board over like this and we're going to hang it slightly over the table. I'm going to use my blue mat because these are quite heavy it's rubber. So I'm going to use my blue mat. Um, we're just going to take some heat and remove this port and let it drop naturally because that way it's not going to cause any damage to the board. So let's pop our heat gun on. And the tweezers that I'm going to be using for this are these ones here. Uh, they're nice and thick so I can get a nice grip on the board or on the port um, and that way it's not going to burn my carpet so I'm just going to start pre-warming this board here And then we're just going to come in nice and close. And we're going to just wait for this to heat up enough to just basically let it drop off the board. So all we're going to do is every couple, of, every 10 seconds or so we're going to give it a nice little wiggle test, not too hard, not too rough, very gently and just see if it starts to come loose um, and that's why we've positioned the tweezers inside there uh, and we should see when it's about ready to come out. So again like I always say this is going to take an awful long time to do because these boards are like one big giant heat sink so it's going to take a while
And I think something's wrong with my heat gun. Oh, okay, bear with me, guys. So there's something wrong with my heat gun there. Um, that's starting to smoke from inside. I'm going to have to use another heat gun, unfortunately. So all that works for nothing. And I'm going to have to open, open the door as well, slightly, because that stinks. So I'll just show you what I mean. So I'm not sure if that's plastic melting or if it's the heat gun itself. I do have spares, so I should be okay. Okay guys, that was incredibly hard work. Um, my heat gun packed up. Um, I've been using uh, a crappy heat gun for the past 10 minutes trying to get it off. Um, so, I mean it's finally off without damaging any pads by the look of it. But basically this is what's happened to my heat gun. Um, the plastics have all melted and now it's not it's not throwing out the heat it should so I'm basically screwed now until I can get a new um, heat gun because I can't work with the one that's there alright so <clears throat> like I said I managed to get it off with no damage to the board uh, but it took a hell of a lot longer than I wanted it to Um, so if you just take a look at the board there Let me close the door All right. So if we take a look at the board there, I mean obviously there's a solder blob there, so what I've had to do is I ended up having to double up on heat guns and use the one that's just packed up and a cheap Chinese one just to get enough heat on the board to be able to remove that. I also had to, had to add some fresh solder um, to lower the melting temperature because yeah, I just couldn't throw out enough heat. Um, but I stayed patient. Um, I mean obviously this is going to be edited but I stayed patient and it took around about 15 minutes to remove that port. It's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, but it's off. I mean I'm just glad that I've got a little bit of patience and I managed to remove it without damaging anything. Um, all the heat was directed on the port so it's not going to be a problem with that. So what I need to do now is just wick everything off, clean up the pads, put some new solder on and then we can get this new port on. Uh, I'm really hoping now that it's not going to be a retimer issue as well. Because unfortunately I'm not going to be able to do any more repairs until I get a new heat gun. I have got spare heat guns but all of them need work doing to them so I'm kind of screwed. Uh, right, so let's just... Uh, Let's just clean up this area, so I'm going to try and find a, a view that works for everyone. Right, okay, so zoomed in a little bit there. Um, hopefully I can see under the scope. Uh, 
go. And I'm just going to wick this old solar off these pads. So you'll notice the direction I'm going when I'm wicking. I'm not wicking sideways, I'm wicking up and down. The reason for that, I don't want to pull any pads. Uh, and these pads do pull fairly easily. So I'm just going to try and clean out these holes. Okay. I'm going to need to use heat as well. Okay, that should work. Um, that was a little bit, um, a little bit awkward to say the least. So because my normal heat gun's not working, I can't get the board hot enough to be able to clean out them holes um, the way I usually do it. Um, so what I'd usually do is I'd heat it up until it, until the board was hot, and then I'd use the soldering iron and the wick to remove it but I can't do that with just two hands because my normal heat gun is just not working so uh, basically um, I've had to sort of hold the heat gun in my mouth and then use a soldering iron and solder sucker to clean it so um, you know when you've been doing this well I wouldn't say as long as me. I mean, I've been doing it a few years, but when you've been doing it for quite a while, you you learn to improvise with what you've got, and unfortunately, um, you know, things break, and it's just one of the things. You can't really help it. Um, so we're going to get this HDMI port on, and hopefully, 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 we haven't got to do anything else to this board because 
I want to do as little as possible to this board just because of the risks involved with using incorrect tools. But I've got to get this job finished because this is well overdue to go back to the customer. Uh, so I've got myself a brand spanking new HDMI port for an Xbox One X. And I'm going to take this out of the packaging. So these arrived this morning. These are around about £5 each. Uh, I bought a few of them just so I've got some in. But these are around about £5 each. But usually what I'd do is I'd leave that solder in and then I'd just heat it up and I'd just let this sit in place because it helps to guide it. Um, but unfortunately I can't do that with this one. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to get this port in. Um, and it looks like I'm going to have to use a bit of heat just to guide it in anyway. Um, I wish this bleeding camera would focus to be honest with you. Um, I'm going to set it to manual focus. Okay, that's about as best as we're going to get. So I'm going to use a little bit of heat just to guide this in. Uh, I'm going to heat up from the bottom actually. Because we don't want to damage the new port. Whoops, oh, I've just knocked the port everywhere. Let's keep the heat on that. So these two back holes are just not fully clean, that's all. Uh, but that's alright. So we're about to drop into place, I think. There's one side. So I think we're in place there. I'm going to inspect it under the scope and just see and make sure everything is aligned correctly. Okay. Perfect. So let's get you facing the right way so you can see what we're doing. Okay, so we're going to add some flux. So you can see the board's nice and warm by how quick that flux melted. I think it melts at around about 200 degrees, 150, could be wrong. Okay, we're going to take some solder, so I'm just going to cut some off the end, we don't need a lot. Uh, and I'm going to pre tin my iron. So let's. Well, first of all, let me get a view so I can see. And I'm just going to apply some solder.
Okay, so obviously there's solder bridges on that, but what we're going to do now is we're just going to apply some more flux and then we're going to drag it over so as it applies to every single pin. Um, we can obviously sort out bridges and stuff as we go along. So like I say, usually what I'd do is I'd pre-tin everything and just let it sit into place to solder it in. And I'd use just heat and then go across it with the iron afterwards. Unfortunately, at the minute, that's not going to be much of an option. So I'm just going to clean my tip and then any leftover solder should just put itself on, move itself to the pins that it needs solder on. Clean the pad again. Hold the iron bar that. And then we just drag across, make sure they're all nice and soldered. Nice shiny pet, nice shiny pins. And let's test them, give them all the nudge test. Actually, let's clean up first. So I'm going to take a bit of IPA. As usual, solar flux cleans up better when it's hot, when it's warm. Like that, beautiful. So that burn on the uh, on the cotton bud there is just going to be. Burnt flux, absolutely nothing to worry about. So we'll give this another pass with IPA. And you'll see it cleans up very nicely indeed. So we can worry about the back later. But for now, that will do. Okay, let's give these a quick inspection. So I'm going to I'm going to run across every pin, and I'll just show you what that looks like. Let's try and get you in focus. And there we go. So, as far as I can see, as far as I can see, there's no solder bridges there, there's no melted plastic, everything looks beautiful, and every pin looks soldered. But we're going to check anyway. First of all, we're going to do the nudge test. And I'm going to test every single one of these, starting from the right. Uh, pin 1, good. Uh, so I call the right one pin 19. I can't remember if it's the uh, Xbox or the PS4 that's backwards, but I call I call the end right pin pin one, sorry, not pin 19. Um, and uh, and then I go across and I get to 19 here. Uh, I'm not sure which way it is around on these ones, but I call this one number one. So one's good, two's good, three's good, four's good, five's good, six is good, seven's good. 8's good, 9's good, 10's good, 11's good, 12's good, 13's good, 14's good, 15's good, 16's good, 
17 is good, 18 is good, and 19 is good. Every single one of them are soldered on beautifully. Considering we haven't got the right tools, uh, or the tools we have got are inferior, that is not bad because I haven't had to go and give them another pass. Right. Finally, I'm going to set my multimeter up into continuity mode. Continuity mode is the mode that goes beep when there's a short um, or when the circuit completes. So if I touch these two probes together, you'll hear a beep. So if any of these are bridged, so for example, these two are both ground. So if I was to touch these two together, they'll beep. Uh, so if any of these pins are bridged, it will beep because the circuit will be completed. And we'll make sure that there's no short that way. So, I'm going to start with pin 1. And I'm just going to work my way across, checking every one of them against the one next to me. We have a bridge there. So there's a bridge on pin 6 to ground. So that's going to be sorted. So pin 6. Uh, that's normal because they were both ground anyway. So, so far so good, just pin 6 that needs sorting. And pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So pin 6 and pin 12. Is it? No, it's not. It's that one. So one, two, three, four, five, six is shorted. Seven, eight, nine. Pin ten is shorted. So six and ten both have bridges. So six and ten are uh, six, ten and 19 is bridged right okay so let's just pop a bit more flux down so these are either bridged or the filters are damaged uh, but we're going to run across and just see how it looks afterwards And that one was bridged. So number six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That one was bridged. And then pin ten. Okay, they should be good. So a very small bridge there, I couldn't see it. But uh, the multimeter will always find it, and that's why we use it. So I'm just going to run across these again. I'm not going to uh, say anything unless there's a short. Okay, they're all good. Right, now... Every pin is soldered and every pin is good. So, the final thing we're going to do before we actually reassemble and test this is we're going to test the EMI filters. Uh, now, the reason we're going to do that is because these, uh, there was quite a bit of damage to the HDMI port and it looked as though it was burnt, so it could have blown the EMI filters. They do go occasionally. Um, and we don't really want to be turning this on if the EMI, if the EMI filters have gone. Um, so the EMI filters are these little things here. And it's very similar to the ones on the PS4. Except these ones are just two blocks of four and then uh, ground pins in the middle. So what these do is they just filter out noise. And it's essentially just a coil of wire. Uh, so we should have continuity on each side of the pin. So if I can get you a close-up view of that there. And 
that's not going to focus so i'm going to oh there we go so basically what these are is these are just essentially there's eight filters here so there's there's two lots of four we've got one filter there one filter there then we've got a ground pin then we've got another filter there and another filter there and then the same on that side so we should have continuity between this pin and the one corresponding on the bottom so each one of these should have continuity to its um, sister pin on the bottom um, if there's no continuity then it's faulty and also if there's continuity between say for example uh, pin 1 and pin 2 on the top so if there's any cross talk between the different filters then it's also faulty and it's going to cause issues with the display so we're going to check each of them now we're going to make sure that none of them are shorted to ground and we're going to do that again with the multimeter in continuity mode and then we can get this reassembled and get it uh, get it switched on and test it now like i said earlier we're not going to know if the retimer chip is faulty until we actually turn it on and test it uh, if it is it's not a big deal but i'd rather it not be so we're just going to test these emi filters now and the um the retimer chip does look good it should be fine uh, it doesn't look burnt in any way but uh we're not going to know like i said Right, so we've got continuity. Good. Ground is good. Good. And good. 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 So now we're going to check, check the cross talk, and all we're going to do is we're going to go to pin 1 on the top and pin 2 on the bottom. Make sure that's not talking. And then we're just going to go across in a diagonal row make sure there's no cross talk on each one that was a slip of the probe good okay so EMI filters are good the HDMI port is soldered we're going to flip this board over and we are going to add some solder to these bottom legs so this is going to help to hold the port in place so we're going to add little bit of flux there and um, we're going to use a bit of heat to, hit, to resist us because again this is a ground plane Okay. We're just going to give this a bit of a clean now. And there we go. Okay, so let's get this reassembled and tested, shall we? Okay, so let's get this board reassembled to the point where we can test it. Alright. So that was a bit of a problematic job, not because of the job itself, but because of the tools. Uh, unfortunately I'm now going to have to go out and buy a new heat gun or a new rework station uh, it is what it is guys like, there's nothing you can do about it these things happen uh, I've had that rework that rework station cost me £70 and I've had it two years and it's got me through so uh, I think the next one I'm probably going to buy is going to be a quick maybe uh, unless Quick want to sponsor this video, uh, which is highly unlikely, but never mind. 
Right, so heating goes that way because we need to cover up these this power regulation area. Uh, let's get rid of some of this dust off here. Um, I'm not going to put fresh thermal paste on it yet. Um, reason being, it needs a good service anyway. That is not a job for this video. Uh, which way does it go? That way, sorry. Uh, yeah, that's not a job for this video. Um, I just want to get this job done and get it get it working and then I can give you the service afterwards there's no point servicing it till we know it works um, I mean it should work the EMI filters are testing good and if the chip blow chips blown um, then so be it but you know right let's uh, let's struggle our ass off with this there we go okay so I'm not going to put this in the chassis, there's no point. Um, everything we need to do with this, we can do it out of the chassis, it's not it's not necessary. Uh, oh, actually, no we can't. Uh, Alright, let's just put it in the chassis. Uh, we need the power button, so yeah. Uh, right, so we're going that way. So like I say, um, I'll give it a proper service afterwards, um, but for now, it can wait. I will do some odd little bits, like brush the dust off the hard drive and things like that. Uh, right, where does my hard drive sit? Is it there? Okay, let's take the disk drive, let's give this a brush off. Good. <coughs> uh, disk drive goes that way. Okay. <clears throat> Take our fan and power supply. Let's give this a quick brush. So that's had a basic brush down, not full. It will do for now. Pop in the fan. the power supply. This drive sits on top. Awesome. <coughs> right, I'm not going to plug the Wi-Fi card in. There is a reason for that, because if I get it wrong it will blow the card. And that is something I do not want to do. Again. 
Uh, I have done it before, unfortunately. Put it in the wrong way and blown the card. So I'm not going to do that. Actually, yeah, I can because I can see which way it goes in. Uh. <coughs> right, so that goes in that way. Okay. Let's. Let's get to testing, shall we? Right, we need a HDMI port. So I'm going to flick that over to the screen. And we're going to get this. I'm actually going to... I'm a, I actually plan on mounting this at some point in the next day or two. Uh, so I'll have a bit more room to work with. <coughs> Same with the camera. I need to find a more permanent fixture for the camera. Right, uh, power. I need power. Right, bear with me a second guys, I'm going to go and grab a power lead. Okay, we've got ourselves a power lead, so we're going to get some power. Let's use this same circuit again because it's easier. So this is a power lead off my own console, I need to get one for the uh, for down in the workshop really. I keep moving it backwards and forwards. So that's not in line yet, but uh, uh, let's, let's see if we can seat it properly. There we go. I heard the fizz, which means it's got power. And console comes on. Let's see if we have a display. Awesome, that's going to come on. There we go, HDMI is fixed. Brilliant. Uh, that was, uh, I mean, despite the troubles with the heat gun, that was easy enough. Uh, if the heat gun didn't pack up, it would have took a lot quicker. Um, but yeah, it is what it is, guys. Sometimes your tools will break halfway through a job and you have to improvise. Um, like I said, luckily, I've got a stack of patience when it comes to these things, especially because I've damaged them in the past. Um, you learn from your mistakes and um, patience does pay off because if I'd have been, been a bit rougher with it and tried to force it, then it would have almost certainly damaged the console, um, possibly to the point of no repair. So uh, I'm just glad that I kept patient and I uh, kept persistent. Uh, yeah, I'm happy. So this is another successful repair. Um, just to summarise, all we've done is change the HDMI port. Uh, we didn't need to change the retimer chip on this one, which is a bonus for the customer and also a bonus for me because at the minute I am kind of grounded without no tools. So, yeah, I hope you found this video entertaining to say the least. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm happy. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Leave me a comment down below, let me know what you guys think. Uh, but until next time, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.